The calling is Finn Balor, you fucking marks! Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Dr. Love 307, a Street Fighter player who thinks that people should stop complaining about the launch status of Street Fighter V. I gotta say, I have heard a lot of complaints, and they certainly are valid, but I agree that you can only hear these things so many times before you get sick of hearing it. Not to mention, there are some out there complaining about things that are, well, stupid. However, let's just watch the video to see what he's actually talking about. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. You get it? He's using the Michael Jackson song to indicate that Capcom's not likely to listen to the complaints in the first place. It's so fucking clever, guys! Yeah, they don't care, okay? That is literally all I hear. When I Not with the singing, obviously, but I, I was just listening to that song. It, well, I wasn't listening to it, I thought about it. Whatever. Basically, all I hear from people is, you know, oh, Capcom and you get... Okay. Oh. So, the point wasn't that Capcom isn't going to listen, so why bother, but to make fun of the people who complain. Alright. All I want to say is that they don't really care about you. All I want to say is that they don't really care about you. Tell me when are you going to start the rant? Tell me when you're going to tell your story. All you're doing is wasting 19 seconds of my time when you could be getting to the fucking point you pay for. Let me get this out of the way before anything. Anybody who does not have the game currently or is not planning on buying the game at all has absolutely no right, no reason to complain. <laughs> Except we do. See, I don't own the game, but I plan to get it at some point. Many of the complaints about the game are reasons I don't go ahead and get it, other than the fact that my finances are in the shitter, seriously, buy my t-shirts, you fucking sods, as opposed to buying other games I would want to play. And there are people who don't want to buy the game ever because of these problems. And would be buying the game if it didn't have these problems. Why exactly do they not have the right to complain about the reasons they aren't giving Capcom their money when part of the reason corporations wind up so out of touch with their consumers is because the sales figures are literally the only thing they see, thus giving the consumer a good reason to say what is making them not spend their money on the release. You want to know why you don't have a reason to complain? I'll tell you why. Capcom, basically, they literally told us, they've told us, how the game, exactly how the game was going to be at launch, right? They told us it wasn't going to have arcade mode. It wasn't going to have this. It was going to have a certain amount of characters. The um, online modes were going to be this, and then the updates were coming at certain times. And they told us those certain times, too. They've told us prior to game release, not about a week, not a, no, months before the game's release, okay? Let me get that out of the way. Really? I didn't know they already said that. You know who else didn't know that? Fans who weren't following the development of the game religiously. I can't even dig for the information that they already said this at this point. Granted, I wasn't exactly expecting you to be able to provide evidence since this is a rant and such, and I believe you, since Maximilian Dude said the same thing, but it would have been nice if you did provide evidence. Not to mention the lack of ability on my part to find the information after the fact indicates that the information clearly isn't as transparent as you say it is by now, but... I'll get to that later. Second of all, you know, with the on with the game coming out and then the online being pretty dookie on the first day, oh, they all had all these betas. There's two different sides of it. There's the first side where it's like, you know, obviously there's no excuse why the online was like that on the first day. But I got the game two days later and I, when I went on the online it was just fine. So they obviously fixed it like that, you know, so that's not even a complaint. You said it yourself. There's no excuse for the game launching with the online as shit as it was with all the beta testing for the online that they did. And by the way, I haven't heard a word about the online since it got fixed. Only when it was an issue. So you're telling people to stop complaining about something that they've already stopped complaining about. But, um, base, okay, okay, right? This is where I stand. If you're not buying the game, 
Why does it apply to you? Because it's a reason you're not buying the game. We've already been over this. I get that this is a rant, so you're not going to use a script most likely. Outline! That way you know if you've already talked about something. Also, here's the thing. If they told us what the game was going to be like at release, why are you complaining? And this is the funny part. This is what I think is really funny about it, right? All the people who follow Capcom, who follow Street Fighter V, and bought the game on day one, we weren't complaining. Okay, first of all, the people who buy the game without knowing this stuff already are definitely more likely to complain about it. Even though it's like buying a sandwich and then complaining that you got diarrhea when there was a press release on the restaurant's website a few months ago that's, you know, buried deep in the news feed about an issue when all you did was want some goddamn lunch. Just because other people knew doesn't mean you don't have a right to complain. Also, I'm putting a video in the description of Maximilian Dude saying why what Capcom is doing with Street Fighter V is bad. So in other words, a guy who knew about the game's launch date and bought the game on day one is complaining. Holy fucking shit, I just disproved your argument on two fucking levels. Because Capcom literally informs us 24-7 how things are over there and how the game was going to be like and what it's going to be like in the future. They've been telling us that. We already have the whole, uh, like, you know, patch and updates and character releases and game modes for, like, all of 2016 already. Good news! I actually found the update schedule you were talking about. Granted, a slightly updated one from February 17th. It doesn't list all of the characters, but it's still an update schedule. Guess where I didn't find it? An official source from Capcom! If they're being so transparent about what's going on, why am I unable to find the information they're being transparent about through an official Capcom medium? I searched through fa Facebook and Twitter to see if there was any sort of official announcement for this too, found nothing. Even look on the forums for Capcom's website, found nothing. Why am I having to dig farther than even this to find something official from Capcom saying something that, according to you, should be public knowledge? Oh, and by the way, you know what that update schedule doesn't include? Arcade mode. Something the people are pissed isn't in the game at all, since it means no two out of three round fights in single player. At all. And people say, you know, oh, it's no excuse. They shouldn't have sold it. They should have just sold it later. There, <clears throat> excuse me, in the fighting game community, there's so many complications that go into it. One of the main things is that if they didn't sell it at that time, it wouldn't have been able to be accepted into EVO this year. I came up with a potential solution to that problem, actually, and I came up with it in like five minutes, so I don't see why Capcom didn't come up with it. Although whether EVO would accept it or not is beyond my understanding, but if they wouldn't have, then transparency would certainly be a viable option for that as well. You know, considering you say they've been transparent about this whole thing. Solution is this. Release a competitive edition that has less single-player content. That way, anybody who sees Street Fighter V this early will already know that they probably don't want it if they want to play single player. Then, when the single player is finished, give that content to the people who already bought the competitive edition and sell the game without the competitive label to those that didn't want to buy the game in an incomplete state. Like I said, don't know if Evo would allow it, but it doesn't seem all that crazy to think that they would. And all the people that, you know, are going to be watching it and just want to get good at the game and want to play the game and have been following them, though our only concern is to be able to play the game. That's all we care about. First of all, no, that's all you care about. There are lots of people who care about things other than online play, and yeah, I will admit that I'm probably not one of them. Don't get me wrong, I want a little bit of single player, but I don't really care about arcade mode and the single player modes that are already there. You know, they work for me just fine. But here's the big issue that Maximilian pointed out in his video. There are lots of casual players who make up the large majority of Evo's viewing audience, and more importantly, the large majority of those that purchase the game, keeping the genre alive for future generations. Catering to the hardcore market and competitive market is one thing, but to shun the casual market in exchange is what caused fighting games to go through the extended period of mainstream trivialization from the mid-2000s in the first place. Honestly, that's all we care about. And, you know, people are like, you know, they're scamming us to doing this, to doing this. Okay, tell me this, right? Would you rather pay 60 for how the game is right now 
get the updates later, know exactly what you're buying, know exactly what's going on later, and you get to vote for what, <clears throat> excuse me, for what type of stuff comes later, like you actually affect what happens to the game, or would you want to do, what would you want them to do what they did with like Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter 4, you know, all these other types of games where they literally just kept reselling the game but with different versions. Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, 2012, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4, the PS4, no! You listing off various versions of Street Fighter 4 actually proves my idea of offering a competitive edition, since they offered upgrade packages from one version to the next at least nearly every time at a lower price. You know, kind of like what I was talking about doing, except I was talking about giving the content to the people who already bought it for free. But, eh... Again, if they had labeled this early version of Street Fighter V differently, even without a price change, less people would feel like they're getting scammed by an early access game that is not labeled as an early access game. Just, the only amount of money I need to spend on the game is the $60 when I buy it. And people keep forgetting, all these characters, all these updates, all these other things that are coming later, they're free. You still have to grind fight money if you don't want to pay six bucks per character. Considering the stigma of unlockable content that tests people's patience, I'd say they have a good reason to complain, especially since many casual players have to either pay for the content or just wait forever to unlock their shit. Well, except Alex, maybe. Oh, by the way, premium costumes have no fight money option whatsoever. So what about the people who want those? Oh, right, the hardcore players just want to play the game. Yeah, considering how many competitive players feel the need to select a specific palette or costume for their character in tournaments, I call bullshit. I think this is about as good of a time as any to give my final thoughts. Rambly video being rambly and all, you know. Basically, man, I get what you're saying. There's a huge audience that is just fine with the launch state because of things promised in the future. Hell, I'm among them. For, for the most part, but I'll get there. However, to tell people to not complain just because the company already said they were doing things a shitty way is dumb on so many levels. First of all, the information that they already said is really hard to find, so how exactly is a casual fan going to even know this shit if someone scouring the forums can't find it? Second, you're allowed to like it even if they don't, and if they're judging you for liking it, then yeah, you deserve to bash them, but... If they're not, then seriously, just fuck the haters. Third, they still did a thing that people find shitty, and here's the worst part. Even I don't complain about the things that you tell me not to complain about, as a primarily PC gamer, I still have big issues. Care to tell me why I can't use a PS4 controller for a port of a PS4 game without tricking the program into thinking I'm using the keyboard? Care to tell me why even though I can't do that, I can use an Xbox controller just fine? Indicating that yes, they did code in controller support, just support for the other company's controller? Care to tell me why I can't skip the tutorial? You say that this game is meant to appeal to those who follow Capcom closely. Okay, then why do people who already know how to launch a fireball need to learn how to launch a fucking fireball? Seriously, this shit is mandatory, and you have to use controls that you may very well be completely uncomfortable with. And if you say for casual players or for people who hadn't played before, why wasn't anything else about the launch status of the game on the Steam store page right up front if they're p appealing that closely to them? I can't speak for the PSN since I don't have a PS4, but you'd think Capcom themselves would want to make it as clear as possible if the only reason they're releasing the game without completing it is because they want it out in time for Evo. Luckily for you, I have advice. Stop complaining about people complaining. If people have a problem with something, they should be able to say that they have a problem with it, especially when your only defense is that you don't have a problem with these things. Also, bonus piece of advice, I recommend mating Rashad, because that dude's a motherfucking B.